Now we have we've completed all the cutouts for the the, the cross halving corner, T halving, mitered halving. The special detail of the horns, the chamfers, one there and one here, using my special aid, uh, which is uh, the bench hook. Now I'm going to show you how to square the frame, also ready to secure the joint using some screws at the back of the actual job and then tidying up the surplus end grain and then that's the job. Complete. What I'm going to do now is do what we call a dry assembly of this frame. So for that I need two bench bearers, which are these. Now these bench bearers are placed for my sash cramps like this. And this is what that slot is for, that sits into there. But before I do that, I need to make sure that the actual bench bearers are in wind, as it, as it were. Wind, this means that it's not twisted, the actual, uh, the bearers. Because this frame, if it was a door frame or was it a frame, it needs to sit nice and flat on here. So to make sure that the, the bench bearers are, are in wind, we need our two winding sticks, just to make sure that it is spot on what, uh, in, in wind, meaning it's, it's the same plane on this side as it is that side. So this is what I'm using, okay, the winding sticks. Okay, so I'm just gonna close one eye, just making sure that the actual bearers are in wind. So when you sight one edge there, this edge to that, you'll, you'll find that this is in line here, but on this side, it's slightly showing an orange tinge or orange mark. That means that this is slightly lower than this side. This bearer is slightly lower. How I know that, I tend to lift it up. Yeah, and if it's, if I, then that gives me the indicating in relation to what I need to raise up or put a packing piece under this bearer to make it in line with that one. This might be too much or too little. It probably might be, oh, like there. So let's see. So now I put a bit of glass paper on there. That should be in line with that. If, if it's higher, that means I need to take off, just read, read, uh, I would need to re, uh, redo the, the, the packing. I then am going to put the, the sash cramp into the slot, because that's what these slots are for. I'm going to put my frame together. And this is what I said, it's a dry run. It's not a, it's not gonna be permanent, it's a dry run. The dry run is just to show you all how it's going to go together, that there's no issues in relation to how it's gonna to come together, that I don't think I put this in right, I put this in wrongly, that goes there. Uh, that one's going in there, in there like that. And then this one's going here. And that's gonna rest on top of there. Just gonna move this bearer a bit closer. So it's got that to support it like that. Okay, so this slides. These things here are to protect the timber, right? So that's what the MDF is for. It's just to protect the timbers. So, when you tie it up, right, okay, so, okay, so, now I've got pressure coming up this way, so pressure in this way, so I also need a crank going above it as well. So all I'm going to do is just lightly tighten it, not too tight, not anything like that, just keep that down and then, so now, just a recap, I've tightened this on, Tighten this up, this lightly. Now I'm gonna put this one over the top of it. And then, let me just, right, so that's the nearest hole. Now the other thing, I just need to raise this up a bit because we're gonna check the diagonals of this once I'm, I've tightened this up. I'll show you what I mean. Um, try to not move that.
So now, <laughs> so now I'm going to check the size that uh, is drawn on on our rod, which is 175, 175 there, spot on, 200, spot on, 200, spot on. The overall spot on is 340 in this case. Spot on 340. 265. I'm happy with that, 265. Right, so now I'm just checking it for squares by using my squaring rod, which is this. This is a squaring rod. It has a little point to it so it can get into the corners. So I'm checking this whole frame for squareness, yeah? So, um, now I'll put a little mark here in red, using my red pen, and then I'll check in this other corner just to make sure it's the same. It's not far out, it's a little bit there. Um, in fact, no, it's there. It's there, it's good. It's good. So that is square. Now, if it was slightly out of square, you would have to manipulate the actual sash cramps to the to the uh, to the longest side to make it out of to make it the same when you marking it so that it's the same distance internally. Yeah, you would have to just manipulate the cramp by either twisting it one way or the other, depending on how much it was out or what corner it was out by. Another way of doing it is by or see measurement. I could measure the corners. So in this case, 265. And again, 265. So this is another way of squaring something. I could uh, use the ruler method or the uh, squaring rod. Two ways that you can do this. Now, I'm happy with the squaring of this frame. I shall then mark the positions for the screws uh, from because uh, they're going to be screwed at the back of this frame. So what I need to do is just flip the frame over while it's in this dry state position. So I'm going to take this out. Let's turn this over. Just so I can mark the positions of where my screws are going to be within this frame. So how do I do that? Well, it's simple. As you can see, I've turned it over, I've left the cramps on, it's a dry run, there's no glue as yet. So, I'm just gonna mark the positions with the screws. So how we do that, if I take a diagonal knife from this corner to that corner, and from there to there, where they cross is gonna be the center where my screw hole is gonna be bored. So, this is what I'm gonna be doing. So, so just make a little cross, a line, put a line there. Staying there, with that cross, that's going to be one point. And same with this one. So, from this corner line to that corner, mark there. The same here. From there to there. Uh, now, here, is where we have our mitre. So where we have a mitre, we cannot have a screw going through the middle because that will spread out the actual mitre. So what has to happen here then is that our, our hole has to be the hole that is gonna be, the screw that is gonna be attached to screw through is going to be slightly off center. So what I'm doing, just knowing that the mitre is there, so I'm off centering the screw that I'm going to eventually put through there by 10 mil will be enough there. So it's going to be, my screw cut hole is going to be there. So I'm going to be drilling a hole for there. So the top one here. So, right, so I can put that one there. So.
Okay. Right, so now I've marked the positions where the screw are going to be uh, securing this frame. Now, prior to doing that, right, uh, it will be ideal that you clean, uh, I clean up the inside faces, yeah, prior to kind of finally fixing it or gluing it together. In this case, I'm going to use it as a prop, so I'm going to have it, uh, I'm not going to glue it together, I'm just going to secure it with screws without the glue, but I am going to clean up the inside faces just to show you what you need to do, and then drill these holes ready for the screwing and then have it finally assembled. Yeah, and then clean off the, the surface here. I'm gonna show you about doing those. Now you're gonna clean up the inside faces with a smoothing plane. In carpentry college, we don't, we don't really like using glass paper because the skills is about using the tools. So, if you, uh, so we encourage students to use the smoothing plane as a clean up, but no glass paper at all. Cleaning up, so it's like that. One shaving, that's one there. Now, is this clean up? Is but I'm making sure that I don't glide over the joint because if I do that, I'm going to make the joints loose. So. The outside doesn't, doesn't matter. You can do those at the, when it's finally together. The screws I'm using right, are, I'm using 25 mil sixes, 25 mil. So in, in, my, in, my, in my actual workshop, these are the screws. So this is a, a metric size and an imperial size. So, an inch is 25 mil, that's a 25 mil six. That means the head of that screw is six mil in diameter, right? So the rule of thumb, so rule of thumb is this. So when you have, uh, we have six, eight, uh, 10, 12 in relation to the heads of the screws. Now, this case I'm using a six. So my clearance hole needs to be a three mil drill bit. So the clearance hole is the hole that the actual screw will pass through. And then, and then the other part of the screw will bite into the timber to hold it together, okay? So I've got a three mil clearance hole and then followed by that, I'm gonna then countersink using my countersink bit. This is what we call a snail countersink bit. It's quite a modern one if you look closely. Yeah, it's not like the conventional uh, countersink. It's got a nice sharp, this is a sharp edge and it gives a cleaner uh, cut. Actually, cleaner cut in relation to not making the timber jagged. So they're quite a, a, a nice tidy bit of uh, accessory to have in your toolkit. Okay.